So the last form of input we're going to look at is mouse input, which is a pretty important uh, form of input if you're dealing with standard uh, computer games. You need to be able to click on things and whatnot. Um, it's very useful to create your own buttons. So for example, you might have a button drawn on the screen, and when the user clicks, you might detect whether that click lies inside that button. If it does, then you do the action for the button. Um, so it doesn't use standard, standard Windows setups where you can create that button from uh, a Windows-based system. You have to manually create your own in this case. So just like the gamepad and just like the keyboard, we need to get the state of the mouse. So we're going to go create a variable for it again. So I'll put the rest of our states. We're going to create our mouse state. Mouse state. I'm just going to call it mouse to keep it very clear. I scroll down to our update section. And just like the other one, we got to get the state. Mouse is equal to mouse.getState. So now we have the current values of all the mouse information. So for example, we have its position. We have which buttons are currently clicked. Um, that includes the left, the right, as well as the middle one. And we can also detect the scroll wheel um, in terms of how much it's been scrolled over the course of the entire lifespan of the program. So just like the rest of the stuff, if we want to use it, everything is very consistent, as I'm sure you've picked up on by now. If I want to detect whether, um, whether the left mouse button is currently clicked, then I would just do an if statement. If mouse dot, you'll see left button. If mouse dot left button is equal to button state dot pressed, then the left mouse button is currently pressed down. And we can handle that however we need to. Now, other things are a little bit different. If you're detecting like their X and Y position, you're not checking to see whether it's pressed or anything like that. It just is a current number. Where is the mouse pointer currently located on the screen? So you might be using this for collision detections. You might be using this um, just for uh, pointing uh, references so the user can figure out what's going on. And of course, um, it's just a simple way of understanding how to actually use this mouse effectively with the rest of your program. So what are we going to do with this? Well, whatever we want, really. But the problem is when we run our programs, let me just open and close this right now. And if we run this program, hopefully there's no bugs because I haven't really been testing this yet. If we run this program, you'll notice that when I put my mouse over top of the window, I can't actually see it. So we need to be able to visibly see what's going on. This is actually a fairly fairly quick change. What we need to do is go up into the initialize code, which is just above here, right here, underneath the to-do section. We just want to say this dot is mouse visible, and this is just a boolean. We're just going to set this to true. And as soon as we set this to true and we run the program, we can now see that we can see the mouse over top of the window. Now, remember, whenever you're getting the mouse coordinates, the mouse coordinates are not in reference to your screen. They're in reference to your game window. So 0, 0 is still the top left-hand corner right here. So when we click somewhere, if I click like right up here, it's going to have a Y value of 0. Right? If I click way down here, because the default size of the window is 800 by 600, the Y value is going to be roughly somewhere around 600 pixels. So we need that information. Now, not all games you want that to show up. Maybe you don't want the mouse to show up because you're going to draw your own image for a cursor. Maybe you have like crosshairs or something like that, depending on the game, you ha depending on the game you're building. That's up to you. So this may not be an option you want to set up. So down in the mouse stuff, if I want to use that X and Y location, I might be using it to say, for example, um, to draw the crosshairs. So I might draw an image specifically where that mouse um, position is. So typically speaking you might want to create uh, variables to store that data. You might also want to create variables to store where they clicked. So for example, oops, um, if they clicked here in the left mouse button click, I might have some variables, maybe they're called like uh, mouse left click x. And I might set that equal to mouse dot x. So that just assigns it to that current value. And the reason why I would actually read that in at this point is because if I planned on using it later on in the code, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, that's right. If I planned on using it later on in the code um, within the same update or somewhere, somewhere else, I now know the last place that the user clicked on the screen, even if it's not, even if I'm not using it right now. 
because I might be using it for like undo features or something like that. I can record it in some way. It's up to me how I want to actually use it. So this is where I would actually record that information. And then I could use it however I need to. Maybe you're using it to say um, you're setting up a value of where to direct your player to go to on a given screen or something like that. So the mouse really is the idea of detecting where the mouse currently is, where they clicked, and um, also you could use the scroll wheel. Maybe you use the scroll wheel to zoom or whatnot. But similar to the analog features on the Xbox 360 controller, it's really a number. So it doesn't, it's not really on or off or anything like that. And in fact, when you actually type this in, you'll see the message mouse dot uh, scroll wheel value. And when I highlight this, you can see it says gets the cumulative mouse scroll wheel value since the game has started. So when you scroll it up, it increases. When you scroll it down, it decreases. So if you continually scroll it up, that means it's increasing in the positive direction. If you scroll it down, then it decreases that value a little bit, depending on how much you scroll it. So then you use this information within your game to detect you know, your um, uh, zoom or whatever it is you're using it for. Maybe you're using it to scroll through a menu or something like that. Again, it's all up to you. What we're teaching you here is just the, gen just the generics, how to basically set it up and how to basically use it. It's now up to you to use that in an effective and use that in an effective way. So that's how we handle mouse input.